talk you through a presentation that I did at Wyoming Literacy Conference about four years ago, uh, how to rewrite text without really rewriting it. What this really is is a presentation on uh, teachers uh, being able to read the text that they're using in class for vocabulary and for sentence structure so that they can actually scaffold some of the reading that kids need to do without having to try to find leveled text all the time. So. Uh, why do we want to do a little bit of rewriting? One is that we do need to do a little bit of rewriting for kids' reading ability, and we need to uh, focus in on interest. So what we're really looking for is teaching towards students who get a disposition to approach text regardless of how difficult it looks. But finding completely rewritten texts uh, tells kids the opposite. Anytime we say we have to find all grade level text for uh, our social studies, blah, 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 you want something like that that's in the ballpark, uh, but you can't expect text to be rewritten down to somebody's level every time they want to learn something new. So uh, how to help people identify with text. Uh, so. In elementary school, kids make choices. They develop uh, attitudes about text based on their actual experiences, not on achievement levels. So we want to have, uh, help them have some successful experience. So let's think a little bit about levels first. Uh, what do we know about levels? And I, I'm going to add one to this. First thing that we need to know about levels is that the levels that you find in programs uh, like Accelerated Reader and Lexile have nothing to do with kids. They only have to do with statistical analyses of word length and sentence length. Uh, that's about all you get there. So you don't actually have any idea whether a kid has the background knowledge or uh, oral vocabulary to succeed with a text unless you actually start letting them read the texts. So uh, when students have background knowledge, their likelihood of successful reading increases. So spending time talking with kids before they have to do content area reading is pre-teaching. So getting those vocabulary words out there and not just in talking but putting them out on the board uh, and keeping them out. So your word wall, other places like that in your classroom, cupboard doors, wherever you need to put things to keep them public and open, uh, you want uh, kids to have that background knowledge before you send them off to do reading. So interest and engagement are also uh, elements that research has shown us are more likely to help kids be able to succeed with words and comprehension and to read above their level. And the next thing is that students got to read, uh, they've got to read warm. You got to let them preview a text and look at it closely before they read it so they can figure out what they already know, what they need to ask about, and so on. So prepare the student's mind. It can change the level of the text. Okay. Uh, so to help students approach difficult text, we've uh, looked at the textbook, we know that it's uh, too hard for some of our students. So uh, to get engagement involved, first find really interesting passages that are likely to be engaging. Uh, so what I'm saying is that if you have a, a social studies textbook chapter that you have to teach, scan that textbook chapter and find the passages where you think this is where the humanity is, this is where the interest is. Uh, so, uh, And help readers tackle just that selection. That should be uh, one of your instructional passages for that text. So uh, textbook chapter uh, might be a great place for you to start looking. Uh, but also a lot of content area books, uh, fact books, informational books will have these kinds of passages where you think, wow, that's the one kids are going to be interested in. And then uh, find other passages around that selection where students will be able to skim and scan to find context for comprehending that selection. So if you took this key paragraph or a couple of paragraphs that you're uh, finding as a hook passage, uh, then start looking around that and saying, this is the second passage I want you to look at, and this is the third passage I want you to look at, so that you're kind of reorganizing the chapter around this hook uh, which is a high interest passage, and then the knowledge that will help kids understand that hook. As, uh, as you think about the entire chapter, uh, how do things fit together? Uh, the next thing is, is to do some cutting. Uh, so once you start identifying those passages, uh, then you can start uh, deciding, okay, they don't need to read this, they don't need to read this, they don't need to read this. Uh, they just need to read these parts of the chapter to be able to understand this key moment that I'm focusing in on this hook passage. So then when it comes down to actually rewriting, then you rewrite that hook passage uh, and then uh, you write it down to a, uh, a level and you might write it down to a second level again, simplifying vocabulary 
and uh, sentence structure. So I'm not going to walk through all of these. I'll go ahead and post each of the pieces. But I'm going to get us down to this rewriting, just because this is the one where I'm going to be uh, teaching you to start noticing uh, what looks and feels hard. So rewrite only the hook passages. Reduce sentence complexity and reduce vocabulary, uh, vocabulary difficulty, uh, especially keeping in mind the idea of moving from cognitive academic language proficiency words to Bix words. So those are the uh, basic intercommunicational uh, interpersonal communication skills. So that's the idea of working from uh, book language down to uh, everyday street language. So, so rewriting a passage from a textbook or from an informational book means that you're going to have the original written passage and the new passage that you've written, and those should be fairly comparable. They should be the same comprehension demands, and they should have a lot of the same meanings to the vocabulary words, but the vocabulary words are now everyday words that you've scaled down to. So. Don't rewrite the surrounding context, just focus on that passage to show kids, look, you can understand this if you understand everyday language. So uh, look at this passage uh, from a U.S. history uh, fifth grade civics textbook. Uh, I've taken this and the only hard words that I feel like I left in there for a fourth or fifth grader are going to be things like the names, constitution, I've got a long word here, but it's also an everyday word. Listened is a word that kids know. Uh, Congress is another vocabulary word here. So even in my, uh, my changed passage, uh, I want to keep some of these words, but I need kids to preview these so that they know they can read them. I need to maybe even say them out loud for them. Look, this is the word constitution. Look, this is the word Congress. Uh, so thinking about what's going to be hard for kids to read, you still let them do a preview. But look at this, one, two, three, four, five lines as opposed to three and a half lines. 51 words down to 38 words. I've cut 25% of the reading. So sentence and phrase complexity, uh, you can cut this down even further. So look, at first James Madison wasn't sure if adding a Bill of Rights to the Constitution was necessary. This sentence is just about as, uh, as long as that. If I wanted to go down one level beyond that, I would split this in two somehow. James Madison was unsure. James Madison did not know, period. Should the Constitution have a Bill of Rights? Question mark. He listened to other leaders, period. Then he thought, period. Then he changed his mind, period. He wrote some changes. Pfft. He gave them to Congress. Congress voted. Uh, so I can take the same thing and uh, break it down into smaller sentences where the kids can clearly see with those periods how the ideas are split up. And that's one of the key things in academic language text is that the ideas are put together in uh, dependent clauses. James Madison didn't know if the Constitution needed a Bill of Rights. That's what he didn't know about. So uh, James Madison was unsure. Unsure about what? Period question mark if whether the Constitution needed a Bill of Rights. So you can break these things down into simpler sentences and simpler vocabulary words. All right, so I'm going to go to another passage. So this is a, a Colorado history textbook, Downey and Bliss, pages 160 and 161. Meeker decided to teach the Utes how to farm. In fact, the Utes hated farming. Uh, they would rather ride horses and hunt bison. When Meeker plowed up the Utes horse pasture and racetrack, they rebelled. Meeker escaped the first attack unharmed. Then he called in the army, which made the Utes angry. They fought the troops when they arrived, killing 14 soldiers. Then they attacked the White River Agency, killing Meeker and 11 other men. There's a lot of humanity in this passage. Out of everything that was in this chapter on farmers and ranchers, this was the one that had this uh, difficult conflict, and it had simple things that kids are going to be able to uh, understand, like uh, Downey and Bliss just saying out loud, in fact, the Utes hated farming, and they were being forced to farm. They would rather ride horses and hunt bison. Those are two sentences right there where I would just stop and have a good long discussion about uh, 
you know, being forced to do work that you don't like to do and then having your playground more or less uh, uh, uprooted by bulldozers or something, just talking about all of that. So uh, how would you change this passage? Uh, one of the things that uh, I did to get kids into this was to give it more visual context, uh, pictures of hunting bison, uh, pictures of farming, just to get kids' minds into that space and thinking about it. Uh, and here's the page that it came from. So, Meeker decided to teach the Utes how to farm. It comes right from that passage in the textbook, and then there are passages around that that I've marked and so on. So, uh, how would I take this passage uh, down a notch? Uh, Meeker decided to teach. Do you have to say that? Uh, Meeker decided to teach. That's a long phrase. Meeker, uh, what he really wanted was he wanted the Utes to be farmers. Meeker wanted the Utes to be farmers. Uh, in fact, the Utes hated farming. I think I'm going to leave that one. They would rather ride horses and hunt bison. Uh, I might split that up. They would rather ride horses. They would rather hunt bison. When Meeker plowed up the Utes' horse pasture and racetrack, they rebelled. So you've got a, a dependent clause there. So then we could just say Meeker plowed up the Utes' horse pasture. Then he plowed up the racetrack. The Utes rebelled. So uh, Meeker escaped uh, the first attack unharmed. Pretty decent uh, sentence there. Unharmed, uh, safe, okay. Then he called in the army, period. This made the Utes angry. They fought the troops, period. 14 troops were 14 soldiers were killed, period. The Utes attacked the White River Agency. That's going to work. Uh, Meeker was killed. 11 other men were killed, and so on. So think about that. Uh, a difficult passage in terms of content, in terms of violence, uh, but definitely part of the curriculum. So uh, think about that. How are you going to uh, rewrite passages so that kids uh, can understand this sort of hook passage? And then you read around that passage as you go out into other areas of the chapter to think about what else do I need them to read to help them understand uh, this, uh, the, the White River Massacre, the Meeker Massacre. Uh, so Utes in the Western Slope, there's going to be other stuff all around this about farming and ranching and the Ute Indians. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, key references, what does it take to create skill readers, uh, skilled readers? There's a lot that's uh, happened with middle school and upper elementary readers that Fisher and Fry have taught to us. Uh, Michael Opitz's article on cooperative reading activity, which is an alternative to ability grouping. Uh, so you uh, use this technique to be able to regroup your kids around the same passage instead of having them read in different ability groups. Uh, Jim Cummins, uh, his original articles on Bix and Kalp. Uh, Juliet Halliday talks about how to reconsider uh, frustrational text levels. Uh, how do you help kids approach difficult texts. And uh, Edelsky, Huddleston, Altwerger, Flores, Barkin, Gilbert, semilingualism and the language deficit. So uh, think about that. There's some ideas in that particular article on uh, helping kids see that what they know, what they already know in terms of basic uh, street language can help them get to the academic language as well. Uh, all right, I'm going to stop there.